you can use Windchill for your Creo Parametric CAD data management. Let's take a look at the workspace interface. Here I am in a Windchill connected Creo Parametric session. I've got this new assembly that I've saved into my workspace. To access the workspace, you can go to the folder browser in the Creo Parametric Navigator and then click on Workspace. And here we see our workspace in the embedded browser. This is Windchill. And you have the standard content that you have in all Windchill pages. For example, over on the left hand side of the screen, we have the navigator, and that is a sliding panel that you can open and close. This gives you access to the advanced searches as well as the ability to browse throughout the common space and specifically the products and libraries that you have access to. Let's collapse the navigator and also other standard parts of the windshield interface for any page. Here it tells us that we're in windshield, gives our username, and at the top of every page, you will have the basic quick search that you can do. You will have your quick links, which gives you access to help and your preferences, as well as your recently accessed list. But now let's take a look at what is special to the workspace interface. Up at the top, it tells us that our primary active workspace is this particular one. And the fact that it has a little blue diamond on the desk icon indicates that it is the active workspace. Sometimes you can be looking at an inactive workspace and it'll tell you that information as well. Then we have the pick and action dropdown list. And there are a few different things that you can do from here. If you have workspace frames enabled, you see a number of different commands that allow you to apply a previous frame or lock the current frame, purge frames, and so forth. And a frame is a way of performing an undo within your workspace. So for example, if you perform an action that you decide that you didn't want to perform in the workspace, you can apply the previous frame, or you could redo a previous frame that you've created. Also, you have access to event management in case there is some kind of fault that occurs when you are trying to do some kind of CAD data management operation. And we also have the edit preferences command. And this allows you to set up different things like, hey, when I check stuff in, where do I want it to go? For example, any CAD documents like Creo Parametric parts, assemblies, and drawings, I can specify which folder within a context I want it to go to, as well as any WT parts or wind chill or enterprise parts that are created. And also you have some tabs in here for part configuration specification and document configuration specification, but that's a little bit more advanced. Let's click OK out of here to change our workspace preferences. And then now let's take a look at the object list. So you can see from the upper right corner that I have a total of 108 objects in this particular workspace. Let's say I want to do a search. Let's say I'm looking for an object that has five zeros in the name and then I'll hit the enter key. Now it's only showing two of the 108 objects and it's just showing the objects that conform to this search in table. And be aware you don't have to use asterisks or any kind of other special characters. Just type in the letters or numbers that you know of. Let's hit the X in order to remove the search in table contents. And now you can see that we have our different objects in here. We've got different columns of information. If you go to the drop down list that says all, we can change to one of our different table views. So for example, we have one for CAD documents only, dynamic documents, and parts only. And from here, you can also create a custom table view. And we also have a drop down list where right now we're seeing everything viewed as a list, but you could change this to as a featured objects list. Those are the objects that have a star on them. In my particular situation, since I just saved this assembly in my workspace, everything is featured. And you also have the option to display 
the list as a top level objects list. But I'll be honest, I never use this drop down list, but once in a while I do use a custom table view depending on what I want to see, especially if I have those WT parts or gray gear parts in the workspace. Maybe I only want to see the CAD documents. I might change to that particular table view. So here we have our different objects. And you notice that we have a column for the number and for the file name. Also, we have a number of different action buttons. And you'll notice that these action buttons also appear in the top toolbar as well. So for example, if you want to open an object in Creo Parametric, you can use the icon here for doing that. Here we have the upload icon in order to sort of like save a temporary copy in the common space. And here's the ability to check in a file. And you'll notice that a couple of those icons also appear on the horizontal toolbar. The difference between the icons that appear next to the object and the one in the horizontal toolbar is that these allow you to perform the actions on the object in the same line as the icon. But if you want to perform the action on multiple objects, you can select the different objects either one by one or using the select all rows button and then use the icons from the top toolbar. Let's take a look at these different icons. So you have a minus sign. This allows you to select different objects and then remove them from the workspace. We already took a look at the upload icon. And here we have the check in icon, then an icon to check out an object. Next to that, we have the undo checkout. Here we have the update. For example, if one of your coworkers checked in an object so there is a newer iteration of an object in the common space you can use the update to grab that newest iteration then we've got an icon to associate parts and documents automatically i'll be honest i almost never use this particular icon here we have the revise icon in case you have something that is released and you need to move it back to an in-work lifecycle state in order to make changes to it the plus sign allows you to re-add existing objects in the workspace. For example, let's say that you had something in your workspace, you accidentally made changes to it, and you realized you wanted to get the common space version in your workspace. Again, you can use the plus sign for doing that. And then we have an icon that allows you to add objects to a change task. We have an icon to create a brand new WT part or gray gear part in our workspace. I never use that. I typically do that from the common space. And here we have an icon that allows you to create a new CAD document right in the workspace. I never use that because I always create the new CAD documents from Creo Parametric. And then we have a refresh button that allows us to update the status of the objects in our object list. Okay, let's take another look at the object list. We have a number of different columns over here that are indicated with symbols. I never remember the order of the columns in here. And the great thing is you can just hover your mouse over the particular column and it tells you what it is. So for example, the one with the stars, this shows the featured object status. Then the one next to that, this one is the modified status. Then we have the local workspace status. Then we have our general status. Then we have a share status, nothing here is being shared. And then we have a column with the object type indicator, which is the little symbol or icon that displays what the object is. And the rest of the columns in this particular table view, well, they use words, so I don't need to hover over them in order to see what they are. And the same thing for the icons. If you're not sure what an icon means, just hover your mouse over it and from the tooltip, you can see, for example, that the blue plus sign means the object was modified locally. And here we have the icon that indicates that this is a new object locally. And here we have another icon that's informing us that the modifications at a minimum need to be uploaded. Next, we have our different drop down lists. And these drop down lists operate in the same way as the icon 
in the horizontal toolbar in that typically you will select one or more objects and then invoke a command. So for example, from the file drop-down menu, we have a number of the same commands that exist in the horizontal toolbar, but we also have commands for things like locking the objects to prevent unwanted changes or unlocking them. And you can also rename, save as, and export the list to a file from this particular menu. From the edit command, we have the ability to edit the attributes of different objects in the object list. You can edit associations. That's a bit of an advanced topic. And depending on your permissions, you might have the ability to set the state of different objects. And also from here, we can specify whether something is going to have the star to be featured or unfeatured. Now the tools menu, from here you can see that we can import to the workspace. We can also export from the workspace. I showed those commands in a different video. The synchronize command helps make sure that you have the latest and greatest metadata about the different objects in your object list. And here's another refresh workspace command, again, to update the status of the different objects. So that is the windchill interface for your workspace. Now that I've got all these different new objects in here, hey, let's take a look at checking them in. With all the objects selected, I will click on the check-in object, and that opens up the form that we can use for checking them in, and I can click on the next button. I happen to know that there are a few ghost objects here, so let's specify that we want to auto-resolve incomplete objects, and I don't need to undo the checkout because nothing is checked out. And here we are going to auto-associate parts to the CAD documents. In other words, create WT parts or new gray gears for these different objects. And there are a few other ones in here, for example, to create a new promotion request after check-in. I don't want to do that. Here you can create a baseline, which is a snapshot in time for a given object. And here you can create a differences report between the current iteration and the previous iteration in the common space if it exists. And then we have one command over here to remove it from the workspace. But I'm happy with how everything is set here. Let's click the finish button. And so now we can see that it is uploading. While this is going on, you have the little status indicator, what some people call the swimming sharks going on down in the lower right hand corner. This indicates ongoing communication with your windshield common space. And step one's almost done. And step two of two has completed. If you take a look in the Creo parametric message area, it tells us that the check-in succeeded. We have a little warning icon over here. This warning allows us to go to the event manager. And so here we have the event manager. And if I make this a little bit wider, I can see that, okay, during the upload, it succeeded with warnings. And if you click on the view warnings icon, it will open up another little window. And here it gives us an indication of some kind of attributes issue. An attribute in Windchill is like a parameter in Creo Parametric, and you can have Creo Parametric parameters mapped to windshield attributes. In this particular situation is saying that, hey, there are a whole bunch of different parameters that were designated in Creo Parametric, but there's no corresponding attribute on the windshield side. So it's giving us a warning about that. I don't care. Let's hit the cancel button and then we can close the event manager. So there you see what the interface looks like for your workspace in Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.